Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at two new watches from Zodiac from the Super Seawolf collection with the Super Seawolf 53. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on these two timepieces, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, also purchase the watch and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at these two new watches. In 1953, the world was introduced to the first wave of commercially available dive watches. Prior to that, dive watches were primarily professional tools used often by military and really didn't have a place for regular commercial consumers. However, as scuba diving became increasingly popular in the post-World War II world, soon a demand for more utilitarian watches became more and more prevalent, so watch companies began producing sporty watches that could be submerged for diving. That year, Rolex introduced the Submariner, Blanc Pond, the 50 Fathoms, and Zodiac, often overlooked, introduced the Zodiac Seawolf, one of the first commercially available dive watches to ever hit the market. Today, we're going to take a look at the Zodiac Tribute to the original Seawolf with the current Super Seawolf 53 in two different variations and see how these watches live up to the historical namesake. So let's take a closer look at these two. Begin looking at these pieces on the wrist. We have a well-sized case with measurements coming in at 39 millimeters in diameter, 12.7 millimeters with the thickness, and a restrained lug-to-lug -lug of 46.5 millimeters. Flat surfaces define the shape of the case along the sides and down through the lugs. The downward turn lugs have some length to them, but combined with the relatively slender case height, help balance the watch on the wrist. The overall wearing experience is pretty true to 39 millimeters with the case measurement, particularly on the rubber strap variant, while the bracelet presence is more substantial and therefore wears a millimeter or so larger. A dome crown with pronounced notches is positioned at the three o'clock position to operate the Swiss made automatic movement within. It is a sign screw down crown with two typical operating positions. The first position hand winding the movement and the second position then sets the time. When the crown is fully screwed in, the watch does have water capabilities up to 200 meters of resistance, making it perfectly suitable for almost any dive-oriented activity. On the top of the case, we have two different dial bezel configurations based on a similar design execution. Both rotate at 120 clicks and have simply linear markings denoting five minute intervals with only the 30 minute interval being identified numerically. Each bezel variant also features a loom plot within the 12 o'clock triangle. That's where the similarities end though and the differences begin. The black bezel is scratch resistant, a matte black ceramic insert with loomed hash marks at those intervals go along with the aforementioned loom plot at 12. The second bezel is a brushed stainless steel insert without any additional loom for a more utilitarian look. The brush finishing carries over from the bezel and is applied to the entire case with the exception of the polished case back. If you opt to go for the bracelet attachment, the brush finishing extends down throughout the three link oyster style design down through the very nice milled folding clasp. It's along the edges of the clasp where we find the only other high polished surfaces. The bracelet links have stepped outer links and a flat center link, all of which demonstrate that uniform brush finish. A push pin system is used to secure the removable links together. And while there aren't any half links, the clasp does provide several points of micro adjustment to achieve a proper fit. Quick release pins are conveniently provided to easily switch between the installed bracelet and another strap of your choice. One point about the bracelet that I bring up often is the clasp in terms of that fold over lock can be a bit difficult to get your finger under and is also going to have a sharp edge. So people that maybe don't have the longest of fingernails or maybe you're going to be easily bothered by something like this, just keep it in mind. This is one area of the bracelet that I think could certainly be improved with future iterations. An alternative strap option to the bracelet is the black rubber strap and pin buckle combo. The rubber is soft and conforms to the wrist with ease, ensuring a comfortable fit. The pin buckle supplied on this rubber strap is surprisingly detailed with polished chamfered edges applied, the etched Zodiac logo, and the general shape. Small details like this are often overlooked, but it's great to see Zodiac paid some attention to what they're delivering with the end product of their straps here. Turning our attention over to the dial, which can be viewed through the convex sapphire crystal, we have a matte black surface that serves as the backdrop for the very retro dive watch aesthetic that this Zodiac pioneered with the original Seawolf back in 1953. Aligned with these smaller triangular markers are small squared steel elements that are nestled within the simple outboard minute track. Each hour marker is made of multiple 
molded luminous material that glows intensely, but there's a lot of it across the dial and bezel in terms of that surface area, especially on the ceramic bezel variants. Moving inward, we have a printed dial text above the six o'clock denoting the Super Seawolf name in either white print for the steel bezel variant or in orange for the ceramic bezel model. Additionally, you have the reference to the automatic movement and the 200 meters of water resistance. And the Zodiac name is printed at 12 o'clock and paired with an applied brush steel Zodiac crosshair logo. A striking sweep second hand with a skeletonized triangular tip finishes off the handset, which is in either orange or white, depending on the variant model. Overall, both of these designs do a good job of capturing the original and also are kind of leaning into the more conventional dial color variants compared to a lot of the modern creations from Zodiac in the last several years. Now turning this Super Seawolf 53 over, we have a solid screw down case back exhibiting a polished outer edge and transitioning to a brushed and raised center surface. Engraved along the case back is typical reference information, including the limited edition out of 500 units being produced for each of these models. Inside though is the STP 111, which is produced by Swiss Technology Production, a movement manufacturer owned by the same parent company as Zodiac, the Fossil Group. The movement is considered a clone of the Eta 28242 in the same way the Salita SW200 is, and it is probably one of the leaders in the category of developing an alternative to the standard Eta 2824. It operates at 4 hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour with a fairly typical power reserve of 44 hours on a full wind, and it offers a hacking seconds feature as well. Now the standard accuracy out of the box is plus or minus 20 seconds a day, but both of these models when we tested them at five different positions were running between five to seven seconds off from perfect time a day. And although STP isn't maybe as much of a household name as ETA or Salida has become recently, it still is probably third in line when you're talking about Swiss third-party calibers uh, from another umbrella. So now to unpack looking at the Zodiac Super Seawolf 53. Now, initially when I saw the release of these watches, I got excited. Now, some people might not necessarily see these in the same light as I will, uh, but I do think that this is actually different, believe it or not, compared to what the typical Zodiac model has really kind of become in the last several years. It's all about color and having a bit more flair with the designs, with the Sherberts. Uh, you saw the new Neon collection that were released earlier this year. That's become part of the mold for the brand. And although that is also true, and I think it allows them to show kind of the more eccentric and fun, uh, playful nature that the brand has, I do think it's great and probably good that Zodiac looks back to the original origins as one of the first commercially available dive watches. And these, I think, do a nice job of encapsulating that idea in terms of the color uh, choice, as well as just the sizing and wearability of these. Now, one thing that I will bring up on the bracelet version, although the clasp is well finished, I think actually getting a handle on it is a bit difficult. I've kind of opted for grabbing the size rather than putting the finger underneath the clasp because sometimes that is a little bit sharp to my finger. Uh, so that's something that I think can certainly be improved. But when you're talking about a Swiss made dive watch for around a thousand bucks, these are certainly in the range. And I think in terms of actually differentiating from a lot of the competition, they have their own DNA. And I think that's what I really like about the Seawolf. Sure, you have like the Doxa Sub 200, you have some models from other Swiss brands like Amido that do a really good job, but these are their own thing. And I think they have a lot going for them. And when you're talking about a dive watch for $1,000, this has to be on a short list. And if you're going for maybe more true to the original just brand ethos, or at least the start of what the Super Seawolf had or the Seawolf had, when it was initially unveiled back in the early 1950s. I think this is a perfect modern embodiment. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel, so really would appreciate that. But also, if you're in the market for this watch, check it out, link in the description. It's available on teddybaldasar.com. We're a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also are going to offer a full factory warranty for all of our products. So if something goes wrong, you're going to be covered. And also this is how we fund all of our future content on this channel, as well as on our main channel, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.